What are you hoping to achieve? Well, we're hoping that the government will listen to this, that they'll take it seriously. Um, you know, our members have been suffering from pay cuts for effectively the last decade. They're seeing a service that's been downtrodden, uh, they're demoralised, um, and ultimately many of them are watching patients die needless deaths. And ultimately it has to change. This isn't an action we take lightly. There hasn't been an ambulance dispute, for, well, a major ambulance dispute for over 30 years. But frankly, no one is listening and they need to see a change. Are you considering coordinated strike action um, like other unions are? Yeah, well, we will be talking to the other unions. We know that the uh, nurses have got their first ballot in over 100 years. We know that uh, our colleagues in Unite and Unison are currently delivering ballots. So we'll be looking to make sure this has the maximum impact. We will be making sure that emergencies are covered. But ultimately, the government needs to listen. We need to see our members' terms and conditions improved. They need to deal with 135,000 vacancies in the NHS. And they need to make sure that the public across the country are ultimately protected. And that's not happening. Uh we know that potentially ambulance workers are thinking of going on strike at the same time as nurses as well. I mean, would you support a general strike? Well, I mean, ultimately, that's not on the agenda at the moment. Um, but I think, you know, right across the public services, right across the private sector, we're seeing the working people of this country who've worked all the way through the pandemic delivering essential services. We're seeing their pay being cut after 10 years of austerity. And at the moment, from the government, the message is we're getting more of the same. It's not acceptable. Something has to change. This, frankly, is a cry for help. And the government needs to listen. The public of Britain deserve better. The NHS members deserve better. And we need to see something something happen and something happen very fast. But wouldn't a general strike be um, a short, sharp shock for the government, I suppose, is what some of your colleagues would say. I know that um, several uh, union leaders have been on this programme and have said that a general strike is the way forward. I'm asking you whether you would support that. Well, I think we have some of the most restrictive industrial action laws in, in the world. Um, that makes it very, very difficult for that to happen legally. We don't want to leave our members in a situation where they can be, be, be uh, fired effectively. So at the moment, we're trying to deal with the matter in hand. And what we're talking about is an NHS strike. You know, the NHS is a backbone of Britain. You know, Nye Bevan, who set it up, said the NHS would be there for as long as people fought for it. And that's what we're doing. We're fighting for patient safety. We're fighting for better terms and conditions for our members. And we're fighting for the NHS that our public deserve. OK, I think you're saying no to a national strike at this stage. Um, I spoke to uh, the union Unison leader um, yesterday. 35% turnout, 8 out of 200 employers uh, meeting the turnout threshold. What was the support for a strike amongst your members? Well, the support is very strong. You know, as I say, we have very restrictive rules in relation to industrial action. We have a slightly ridiculous position where we have to rely on postal votes. You know, despite the fact that the Conservatives well, are quite happy to have electronic ballots. That's because the mail workers are on elected. strike. That's the problem. Well, yeah, yes, partially, but at the end of the day, we have to ask the question that, you know, when Liz Truss, um, and we saw the disaster that happened there, could be elected by, via electronic voting, we have to ask the question why we have to rely on, quite frankly, antiquated methods to deliver industrial action. What we're hearing loud and loudly from our members across the country is they're not putting up with this anymore. And quite frankly, we have to reform industrial action law. We have to reform, you know, even Winston Churchill talked about the right to strike being a fundamental one and yet we have a load of public school boys in the uh, uh, who run the government who quite frankly are not interested in listening they have to start listening to this k and this is a, this is an issue that affects every single person in britain you know so many of us rely on the nhs when we call 999 speaking to call handlers who are often paid less than 10 pound 50 something has to change and quite frankly we're getting fed up of being talked to talked down to by the government who seem completely in the dark about the problems Quite frankly, we've come to the view that they simply don't care. And this isn't good enough. It's not good enough for patients. It's not good enough okay. for staff. It's not good enough for anyone. We pay our taxes and we deserve better. OK, Ms Prendergast, I've got my pen at the ready. Just give me those uh, figures, if you would, please, for the support for the strike. Um, I haven't got them off the top of my head, but our members voted. They voted in a legal ballot under very restrictive uh, laws. Ultimately, they passed a very high threshold, and they have shown, and they, they voted, and they're going to be supporting it. And we expect a picket what line to be strong. We expect mass support. 
The thread, well, the threshold ultimately is you have to get over 50% on a postal ballot. And as you said, in the current situation with male workers on strike, what lots of our members have said, they're working themselves, you know, all, all hours. They're doing very long shifts, supporting the people of this country. Okay. And on how, a high how threshold, high they have shown that they support you? this. Outcome. How high above 50% were you? It, it varied in different ambulance trusts. Um, as I said, each one was dealt differently, and in many of them, we completely smashed that that, that threshold. So and our were members there several have shown where you didn't meet the threshold. Case. Were there many when you didn't meet the threshold? There, there, there were. There were. There, 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 were, there were a few. They vary across the country. As I said, if we went to the pre-2016 rules, then virtually every single ambulance trust would be put out. As I say, okay, you know, but we're not in Churchill 2016, we're in 2022. Strike, How many Richardson. ballot papers did you send no. out? How many ballot papers did you send out? Uh, I, I... I think it was somewhere in the region of 20,000 to our ambulance members, and over 10,000 of them will be taking action. OK, so 20,000 you sent out. How many were returned? I haven't got those figures off the top of my head, I'm afraid. OK. Um, you say that patients will always come first. If there's coordinated action of um, strikes by um, unions in the NHS, how can, how can you safeguard um, the health of patients? Well, at the moment, the question has to be asked is whether the, he the, the protection is being safeguarded currently. You know, we've got ambulance workers who are talking of 26-hour delays to get out to people who desperately need that support. We have people literally dying on queues outside of hospitals. You know, ultimately, we're watching a service be run into the ground, and our members have bravely taken a stand that says this cannot go on. So we will be providing emergency cover. We will be speaking to the NHS trusts about exactly what can be delivered on that. But this is about delivering a short, sharp shot to the government. They have a choice. They can either fund the service or they can simply watch it wither away. And what we have to say is we deserve better. We've seen these members work all the way through the pandemic, putting themselves and their families at great risk. And what's the thanks they've got? Further pay cuts. They're seeing mortgages go up, they're seeing energy bills go up, they're seeing everything go up, and they are getting poorer. And this is totally after 10 it. years of flatlining wages. It's not Totally good get it, Mr Prendergast, absolutely. And I'm sure a lot of my viewers this morning will be saying, you know, we went on the steps to clap for carers and, and look at the position that they're in. We're hearing that some nurses have to use uh, food banks. I'm sure other NHS workers find themselves in the same position. But I suppose my question to you is that you cannot guarantee the uh, welfare of patients if there's coordinated action um, as because of a lot of unions who are working with the NHS, can you? You just can't. Well, no, but we can't guarantee that safety at the moment. As I was saying, GK, one third of our members in the ambulance service believe that they have been involved in a delay that has led to a patient dying. So this isn't a situation where this is a service that runs perfectly well. This is a service that's dying on its feet. And our members are actually standing up and you know, the public of Britain should support them. This is a matter of a life or death situation. They don't want to strike. They do their job because they want to save lives. You know, they work extremely hard, often for wages that a lot of people wouldn't get out of bed for. And ultimately, you know, they are saying enough is enough. It's time for them to take action. This is the one thing that they can do to try and improve patient safety, to try and improve the terms and conditions, to try and deal with that 135,000 vacancies that we have among a service that we rely on. You know, I was born in an NHS hospital. I've had relatives die in an NHS hospital. It's there for us. And at the moment, there's a big question about whether that support is going to be there when they need it. And, and I know, was born in an NHS hospital. And, I, and, you know, I've had relatives die in an NHS hospital, but I wouldn't want a relative of mine to die in an NHS hospital because there was coordinated strike action by the unions. No, and no one wants that at the moment. But what I also wouldn't want is a relative of mine to die in an NHS hospital because it's being denied funding, because there's staff shortages, because there's delays, because ultimately the staff are demoralised, overworked and tired. And what we're saying is that has to be addressed. OK, it's really good uh, to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed for uh, putting the case this morning for your union. Thank you.